On today's photo moment, we're going to find out what this Expo Disc thing is. It's for white balance. How it works, what it does, whether you need it, and uh, what difference it makes if you use it wrong. Is it is it wrong or wrongly? I think it'd be wrongly. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show right here at youtube.com slash photo Joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking about photography, video, live streaming, and all topics related. Today's topic is white balance, one of those very simple things that you kind of want to get right. White balance is super, super important. If you're shooting raw, you can always fix it, but you know, it's still better to get it right in camera. If you're shooting JPEG, you can fix it too, but it's not as good. And if you're shooting video, it's kind of the same as JPEG. You can fix it, but you really want to get it right. So how do you normally go about getting white balance right? Well, you can, of course, on your camera set it to auto white balance and just let it figure it out. And let's be honest, it's usually pretty good. Or you can go in there and manually configure it. You can go in and dial in the Kelvin, the, the temperature and degrees Kelvin. You can choose from presets like sunny day, cloudy, um, fluorescent tungsten, those kind of things. Or you can do a manual white balance. Now, manual white balance, and I don't mean dialing in the Kelvin, but manual white balance is achieved by pointing your camera at a known neutral subject. So this could be, it could be a white wall, but you don't really know if the paint's pure white, and white's not really the best thing for white balance. Anyway, we want something that's a bit more neutral. If you're wondering why that is, I got a whole video about that. We'll link to that up here. A whole video on why you don't want to use actual white for white balance. And, um, and you point it at the subject and you tell the camera that's white and the camera goes, okay, and it adjusts the white balance to make that white. Again, a white wall, not ideal, better than nothing. Um, neutral subject, something you know is truly neutral, like a gray card. I've got, um, here, let me grab these things here. I've got this pop-up gray card that I've used for years for this sort of thing. The problem with a card like this is it does tend to fade over time. This one is quite a few years old. I'm sure it's not 100% accurate anymore, uh, but I've used it and you know at least it's consistent. And that incidentally is a very critical point of this. If you're shooting multiple cameras and you wanna have the cameras look the same, calibrating them to be the same off of the same subject is super important. Even if this is not perfect, your white balance might look just a tiny bit off, you're gonna fix that later, or maybe that tiny bit off is perfectly fine with you, but they're consistent, that's really, really important. So obviously it's good to be accurate, super important to be consistent across multiple cameras. Then you got something like this, the Color Checker Passport, they make this for, well this is this is Color Checker Video, the big one, they make the Passport, the little one. This has a white balance card on it. This is something that is spectrally neutral. It's a very, very specially designed card to reflect all wavelengths of light evenly. Um, very important, right? Very good. So the idea behind this is you would put this up somewhere where the light is shining. So if I've got my subject, if I'm photographing me, I'd hold this in front of my face, right? So I'd say, I'm going to photograph me here, put this here, do a custom white balance using the camera's custom white balance setting off of this. The camera looks at this. You say, this should be white. Notice it's not white. It's gray. You point it at this, the camera calibrates off of that, and you've got accurate white balance. Great, super cool, right? The problem with this is, as I've said, they fade. Let's, I'll just leave this here. They tend to fade over time. It's just natural, it's ink, right? It's gonna fade over time. And so, and it's big, right? Kind of cumbersome. And you've gotta get out where the subject is and have them hold it, and, 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 and. There's a lot of different reasons that this is not ideal. Believe me, it's a great thing to have, but it's not always the easiest thing to use. Therefore enters this. So what's my story with this thing? No, this is not a sponsored video. No, they did not ship this out to me. I've actually owned this thing for probably a decade and never used it. Like I used it once and went, eh. And as I, I saw a blog post, um, it was on my friend Julio Shorio's blog. I saw a blog post maybe a few weeks or a month or so ago, and he's talking about this. And I thought, I've got one of those somewhere. And I found it and I did have one. And I thought maybe I've been doing it wrong all these years. So, well, that one time, you know, a decade ago. And so um, I broke it out, read some instructions, started playing with it and realized <laughs> I had been doing it wrong. And if you've got one of these, if you've ever played with one and you've thought oh, the results really aren't that great, chances are you might be doing it wrong too. So here's, here's the rub. When we are doing our white balance with the camera auto white balance, I'm just pointing it at my subject, auto white balance, take the picture. It looks at the subject, it sees the light hitting that subject, it calibrates for that subject as the light's hitting it, boom, we have white balance. If I am using one of these, it's the exact same thing, right? I'm the subject, I hold it here, the camera's over there, it points over here, it gets the white balance off of this. Perfect, that's what it's supposed to do. When you use this, this is an incident meter, which means this has to be on the camera pointing at the 
light pointing at the direction the camera is going to be shooting from, not pointing at the subject. That, my friends, is the absolute key. And I would wager anybody who's not getting good results with this, as I wasn't in the beginning, it's because you're doing it wrong. So if I imagine it like this, let's say that I, as the photographer, I'm standing over there where the camera is. So right, your camera, your view, the light that is hitting me is very different than the light that is hitting that camera. In fact, there isn't any light hitting that camera. The only thing hitting the camera over there is whatever happens to be bouncing off around here. So if I'm wearing a bright blue shirt, it's going to be reflecting some blue light back up there. That's going to affect the white balance reading, right? If I do this, the light from wherever is hitting this, bouncing into the camera, giving me a, an accurate balance. But if I'm using this, the light is coming, bouncing off of me into here, and it's not right. That's not the light that I want to white balance for. I don't want to balance for the white, I don't want to balance for the light bouncing off of my subject. I want to balance for the light that's hitting my subject. So therefore, I need to walk over with the camera, put this on, and take a picture and calibrate it. We're going to look at how this works, of course. Calibrate it pointing towards the light or towards the camera. That is the key. Okay, so now that you know that, let me show you how it works, and then we're going to look at some results, and you'll see exactly the difference between doing it right and doing it wrongly. Cool. So here's how it works. Uh, let's go ahead and switch over to the camera. So here's the camera setup. I am going to go into white, uh, auto white balance, and so there's auto white balance, and normally you take a picture on auto white balance, take a picture. Okay, so there's the picture that I get. That's the auto white balance, you know, looking pretty good. Um, if I point it down at the subject here, do it a little auto white balance, probably start on autofocus again, there we go. There, you know, looking pretty good, that's auto. That is the camera doing its whole thing automatically. But then I go, okay, well, I wanna do a custom one, right? We want this thing to be really accurate. So I take this thing and I go into the custom mode. So I switch over and we're gonna grab one of my custom presets on the G9 and the GH5, you have four custom presets. You select uh, select white set, so it's pushing up. I point it at my subject, I hit the set button, and it creates a custom white balance profile off of that. Now I've got something that is a totally custom white balance for that. So that is now a perfect white balance based off of the card at hand. This is easy, I'm here, right? Nice, but let's use this now. So now what I wanna do, same thing, go into the custom white balance mode. So I go into there, I do select white set, but now what I have to do is take this thing, notice it has two sides, it's got a kind of a white opaque side and a weird reflect, let's take a close up look at this thing. You've got a solid white side, and you got a side that looks like it's got a bunch of little bumps on it. It's actually under glass, there's no texture to this. You can, I mean, you can't feel the texture, but there's two sides to this. This side, the white side, faces the sensor. This side faces the subject, or the light source, if you will. So what I do is I simply take this and I hold it over the lens. You do not need to buy a bunch of these for every size lens that you have. Buy the biggest one you might ever possibly need and you just hold it on. It's not like you have to go around taking a bunch of pictures, you hold it in place, push a button and you're done. So we go into the white balance setting. I put this over the lens, I push the button and it's completed. And now I've got a new white balance and we can take a picture of this again. And now that is taken with the white balance set based off of this thing. So that's all there is to it, right? That's how it works. So regardless of your camera manufacturer, go into the custom white balance setting. It's gonna say either take a picture of something white or it's gonna say choose a photo of something white that you already took. I think Canon is the only one that does it that way, the second way where you have to first take a picture of something white and then you go in and you set the white balance. Pretty sure everybody else does it the way you just saw here. You select custom white balance, point it at something white, or in this case, cover it with this, push the button, it calibrates the white balance and off you go. Okay, so again, here in this, what I was just doing here was kind of sort of doing it wrong because I'm pointing at the subject, not pointing it at the light source. Now here in this space, it's all pretty much the same, but in a regular shooting scenario, it may not be. So let's now take a look at the difference of doing it right versus doing it wrong. Before I do that though, I just wanna remind you of the way that this program works. This show works on a value for value model. That means if you feel that you have earned value from this show, then I would most certainly appreciate if you consider putting a little bit of value back. If you head over to photojoseph.com support, you'll see all the different ways that you can do that, including things like shopping in the affiliate store, including of course the idea that if you decide to buy one of these today, please use my affiliate link. Again, not sponsored, not an ad. That's just how I make money. Um, or you can become a member of the site and there's a lot of other options. They're all over there at photojoseph.com support. All right, with that said, let's take a look at some before and after pictures. So I'm going to first show you something set up here in the studio. This is auto white balance. We're starting from here. Auto white balance pointing at the subject, and that was the, the card and my little gray thing. Standing, literally this was shot like this. I'm here, well the camera, I guess the camera was like here. The cards were there where you saw them when I took them down for the show. Pointing it there, 
with the camera set to auto white balance, this is what it gets. And you see the, the colors were 5650 degrees Kelvin with a minus seven tint. That's what the camera determined. And I got those numbers by taking it into Lightroom and looking at what it set. So that, that's where that came from. On the right, we see the Expo disc pointing at the subject. So technically doing this incorrectly, right? It is not doing it properly because I'm pointing at the subject, not pointing at the light source. Now in this particular environment, I've got a lot of lights up here pointing that way. Those lights are not pointing at me. Now some of them are because I've got some lights over here, kind of key lights that are, um, or hair lights that are kind of filling in a little bit, but it's not exactly the same. So I then flip it around. We're gonna take the picture on the right and move it to the left. Now on the left hand side, we see the Expo disc pointing at the subject. And on the right, this thing done properly, Expo disc pointing at the source. And you see the difference here and you can see the difference in the picture. And you can see obviously the numbers, 5300 minus 12 versus 5500 minus nine. So not a huge difference, but it is a difference. And you can see the difference in the photo there. And in fact, now we're gonna go full screen and I'll go kind of a toggle back and forth. So now we've got pointing at the subject, pointing at the source, pointing at the subject, pointing at the source. There's a subtle difference. It is definitely warmer. Uh, this one is warmer. And as you go back and forth between them, you start to feel like, you know, you know what, this one's a little bit cool. That one's a little bit cool. It is not right. This one is more accurate. And in fact, if we take this into Lightroom and do a manual white balance by clicking on one of the known neutral settings, we'll see that the one from the Expo disk shifts less. It's still going to shift a little bit because I don't know, software determines something different, but here we go. So we go back into here. There's, there's the three photos we just looked at. There's the one auto white balance pointing at the source, uh, pointing at the, at the subject rather. This is with the Expo disc pointing at the subject. This is Expo disc pointing at the light source. So very subtle differences, but there is a difference. You can see the white balance moving up here. So we're gonna go with this one, the one that should be most accurate, 5500 and minus nine. I'll grab the eyedropper. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the white eyedropper click on this and it goes from 5,500 minus nine to 5,600 minus seven. Very, very subtle shift. If we toggle this back and forth, very, very subtle. And again, I'm not actually pointing it at the proper white balance thing. Kind of shifts a little bit depending on where I go. I said, I think this one's a little bit cool. So if I click on this, it tends to warm up a little bit too much, I think. Um, but going back to using the most neutral tab on here, that is an almost imperceptible shift, which I think this is pretty darn good. And if we go back to, let's say the one that the camera auto white balance did, and we do it, we're going to see a slightly bigger shift. So there was quite a bit of a bigger shift in there. Okay, so now let's take a look at some cases of doing this incorrectly. So you can really, really see the differences. The first one we're gonna look at, this is kind of correct, but kind of not. So on the left, auto white balance, on the right, Expo Disc. Huge difference there. I would say neither one of these is perfect. The one on the right feels a little bit too warm, the one on the left is too magenta. The difference there, we're sitting under a canopy having lunch. The light is basically the same all around us. I pointed the Expo disc at him as opposed to taking his seat and pointing it back at me, but I felt that the light was the same everywhere. My personal opinion, it's a little bit on the warm side, but then technically I didn't do it totally accurately. So eh, maybe splitting hairs there, but uh, I do like the image on the right better, but I still feel it's too warm. Okay, next one. Here is a example of doing it correctly. On the left, auto white balance straight out of the camera. On the right, the Expo disc is in the sun, taking a picture of something in the sun. So I have full sun hitting the dick, Expo disc. So I am effectively doing this properly. The same light is hitting the Expo disc as is hitting the city out in the distance. So we are getting that same light. So this should be totally accurate. And that looks nice, right? It looks real nice on the right. If I do this, I stepped into the shade, now we're doing it wrong. So Expo Disc uh, on the right, in the shade, taking a picture of something in the sun. So you can see how overly warm it is. And then there's auto white balance on the left, which actually looks better. So in this case, we're taking a picture of something where we can't, let's just pretend that I couldn't possibly step out into the sun. So in this case, what we're getting is the light that's hitting the subject, not possible, not possible to hit the camera, and so if I do a white balance with the Expo disc, it's not gonna be good, right? We're seeing that up there. We're seeing that it's just too warm because I've got shaded light hitting me. Therefore, the auto white balance in the camera is definitely doing a better job. But as soon as I step into the sun, now on the right, you see the one that does look better. That looks really quite accurate. So yeah, that's pretty good, right? If you can't get into the light source, if you can't get the light actually that's hitting your subject, if you can't put your camera there, then mm, probably not gonna be a good idea. But if you can, 
it seems to be working pretty well. So there you go. So overall, I think you're getting a bit more accurate result with this but you have to be in the right conditions, right? You have to be able to get to where the light source is sitting. You have to get your subject, which in many cases is not a big issue, right? You just step, take a couple steps over. Now I'm where my subject is, point the disc with on the camera towards the camera, towards the light source, get the right light on there, take a couple steps back, take the picture, you're done. But if you're doing something like that landscape and you're standing in a shade and there's no way to get to the, where the sun is, you're not gonna be able to do it. So it's interesting, it's interesting. I am very curious to know if you out there are using one of these and whether you find it to be something that is useful enough to merit carrying around in your bag all the time. Do you have one of these? Do you actually use it? For those who don't have one or can, and are considering buying one, if you've seen it now and you're like, yeah, I'm in, I need it, great, go buy it. But maybe check the comments down below. Read them after a while. Let's see what other people are saying and uh, make a decision based off of that. So it's kind of, it's an interesting product. Oh, interesting idea. Okay, with that, it is time, my friends, to jump into the Q&A portion of the show. So if, you haven't, if you're watching live and you haven't gotten your questions in yet, get them up onto the screen. Make sure you put at Photo Joseph in front of them, and we will do our best to answer them. See you back here in just a moment.